So, um, <laughs> I found this old book that had been given me, given to me as a gift a long time ago. There are a few books in this, I guess you could call it a series, um, that are sort of done as almost like field journals of fictional, I guess, creatures. This one's fairies. I know there's one about dragons. Um, there are at least a couple of others, but um, I've been wanting to do a video of this. And even though this isn't technically, technically, you know, non-fiction like most of my lesson type videos are, I just, because of the nature of it, I felt like it was more of a lesson than a story. So, for today, we are going to pretend that fairies actually exist and go through this book and learn about them. This one's Fairyopolis, a flower fairies journal. Dear sirs, I hope you will not mind my writing to you with a request. I am an artist and a writer who has been fascinated by fairies since I was a child. My first book, Flower Fairies of the Spring, will be published later this year. I am sending the Society a journal I kept during the summer of 1920 when I felt particularly inspired to write and sketch copiously. I am trusting you, my fellow fairy lovers, to look after and preserve this book. Yours sincerely, Cecily M. Bake Barker. This journal belongs to Cecily M. Barker. That there looks like it is a picture of her. Even with like a little flap to make it look like it's sort of been stuck in. There's a little fake paper clip on top. The back looks like it was some photography studio. <laughs> made it look like she actually stuck her picture in this journal. And here come lots and lots of words. Lots and lots of words. Very nicely written words, but I'm not going to read all of them. It's buttons are surrounded by meadows filled with wild flowers, so that is where this all takes place. She mentioned animal footprints here. I have some knowledge of animal footprints, and I'm convinced that these prints were not from any ordinary creature. So she mentions this rabbit looked like this with squirrels, sparrows, mice. These must be fairies. Now one can see the impressions of tiny toes like children's footprints on a beach. Here is the daisy fairy. Humans try to search for me. I flit, I fly, I hide from thee. Left my petals, but only three, to see if you may capture me. Let's try this one. Nope, that's a butterfly. This one is another butterfly. There's a fairy. Let's see how many others. Butterfly. Bee. Bee. And bee. Okay, so only. Only one had the fairy in it. Tiny field guide to fairies. What is a fairy? A fairy is a tiny being in human form that possesses magical powers. The English word fairy comes from the old French fairy, F-A-E-R. The Latin fata, meaning fate. The classical Greek fates were believed to control the destiny of the human race. Fairies are called by different names in different places. Fairy, fay, fay, the little folk, the good people. Additionally, there is a whole variety of other supernatural beings that are generally classified as fairies. For example, 
elves, pixies, brownies, and hobgoblins. The main types of fairy. Flower fairies. Beautiful creatures that embody the spirit of a flower. Shrub? Shrub? Shrub or tree. I thought that said shrunk. They are found wherever plants and flowers grow. Merry creatures who live in colonies under the earth. They love parties, music, and dancing, and are known for making mischief. So evidently these are more like... <laughs> more like Keebler elves or Santa's elves than Lord of the Rings elves. Pixies. Playful elfin creatures. England's West Country is famous for its helpful but mischievous pixies or piskies, as they are known in Cornwall. They occasionally mislead travelers. Goblins. Small, grotesque creatures that like to make trouble for human beings. Hobgoblins, however, have, sim have a similar disposition to brownies, being friendly and good-humored, and fond of practical jokes. Brownies. Helpful little men who sometimes assist with household chores. They have been said to visit farms in Scotland and get tasks done while the family sleeps. Dwarves are the miners of the mountains. They never appear above ground during daylight hours because they will turn to stone. Gnomes are little bearded men who guard hidden treasure in the woods and hills where they live. Leprechauns are clever Irish fairies who wear three-cornered hats. Every leprechaun has its hidden pot of gold. So, let's see. It says, I have put together this small book containing salient pieces of information. There's more notes here. Something about this type of flower, wildflower print. Sprays of fragrant, well-shaped white flowers, often in late spring. See, interesting <laughs> list of library books over here. Fairies of British Isles, fictional fairy books, as well as a library card. What does this say? Gent fairies. Sheer singing, can you hear my white bells ringing, ringing as from far away? Who can tell me what they say? What or who could have sung this unearthly chorus? I began to sketch. A beautiful creature came into my head, the lily of the valley fairy. She tinkles her tiny white bells in harmony calls the other fairies to sing. Twelfth of May, this morning I cycled to Storrington Library. I ventured into their folklore and myths section, and there were some very interesting books on the subject of the little folk. That's when she put this field guide together. Let's see. Oh boy. Fairy places in Sussex. That's what it says up here. And a list of places that supposedly have fairies. There's a map of Sussex. Wow. I, uh, I live in America, so I don't really know much about geography in England, so I don't know where exactly Sussex is or any of these places, but... of May, I've come across a very interesting advertisement in the Sussex Herald today. Perhaps I should attend the lecture. If nothing else, the sea air at Brighton would be exhilarating. We'll cycle down to the station and investigate train times. Sussex Herald. 
the British Fairy Folklore Society and its members welcomes you to a lecture on the subject of the little people, their habits and behaviors, given by a renowned fairy expert and enthusiast, Lady Harrington Smythe, to be held at St. Mark's Church Hall, Daisy Lane, Brighton, Sussex, on Saturday, 2nd June at 2.30 p.m. Tickets, refreshments, latecomers will not be admitted. And here's a drawing at the bottom. It says, Violet, the shopkeeper, told me that fairies are known in Sussex as Pharisees. And I guess this is made to look like she pressed flowers into the book itself. Let's see. Huh. Very fragile. This is... You can kind of tell what it is. Sort of like a little tiny mesh made to look colorful, but it's in this little fictional story of ours that must be Fairy wing. Very fragile treasure, 25th June 1920. A perplexing little find stumbled across this tiny scrap caught up on a sharp thorn. At first I thought it part of a butterfly's wing, but on closer inspection I don't believe it is. There is a butterfly collection at the Horniman Museum. It's so close to home that I could visit the collection and drop it to see Mother and Dot, too. 30 June. The museum was full of information. It was so nice to see Mother and Dorothy. The children in Dorothy's kindergarten. Dot asked me if I wouldn't mind having one of her charges. Dulcie Evans to stay with me for a week or so. Her mother's ill, her father's long since passed away, of course. I'm glad to help out. Mentions types of butterflies. Palsea, albumacula, nymphalis, polychlorus, polyamidus icarus. Admit one to the museum. The top butterfly flight speed is 12 miles per hour. Wonder if fairies can fly this fast. Fairy fly in exactly the same way as a butterfly, I wonder. Sort of shows how a butterfly flies. Butterflies are impressive flyers, flapping their wings slowly but strongly. Butterflies and moths have tiny scales covering their wings. That's by this specimen by the lavender. So, that wing. 1st of July. The museum had many butterfly specimens and I studied the wings at length. I am now convinced that my piece of wing does not come from a butterfly. It has an in indecent quality to it. Could it be a fragment from a flower fairy's wing? When it rains, butterflies find shelter in canvases and the cavities. I wonder if this is where the flower fairies find shelter too. I shall seek the fairies in places butterflies favor. Nice watercolor of a fairy. Some stuff about her family. Mm, this is interesting. 3rd August. Was awoken by noise in the middle of the night. I stumbled into the garden, the source of the disturbance. A whimpering sound became more distinct, which I recognized. 
recognized to be a baby's cry. It gradually dwindled to nothing. I spotted a flower head lying on the grass. It looked so much like a baby's bonnet. It came directly inside and wrote to Dorothy. Having written the letter, I realized that it all sound ra sounds rather odd, so I will not send it. I feel much calmer now, so I shall endeavor to return to sleep. Dearest Dot, so this is the letter she was going to send. I am writing this letter in the middle of the night, having been woken by a strange noise in the garden. I believe this disturbance is in some way connected to, the, connected to the strange and inexplicable events that have taken place at Barton since I arrived. I will not bury you with the details, but I have witnessed certain phenomena that point towards the existence of something other than myself living here at the house, or at least in the garden. Please let me reassure you that I am not at all frightened. first rule is that it must be a very hot day that we may consider it as settled. You must be just a little sleepy, but not too sleepy to keep your eyes open in mind. Well, you ought to feel a little what one may call fairyish. Best time for seeing fairies is what it says up at the top. So I guess that that's how that's relevant. I guess in this part she, during the 20th of August, starts looking and talking about trying to find fairies. No luck so far. Nothing yet. Where are you? I admit defeat. Exhausted. The best time to see a fairy are at twilight, midnight, just before sunrise and midday. Once a fairy has been spotted, be sure to keep your eyes fixed upon it. The fairy will only be seen for as long as one looks at it unwaveringly. Dictionary of Fairy Trees. Oh, huh, interesting. Apple, Ash, Beech, Blackthorn, Elder, Hawthorn, Holly, Lilac. The first of September, I've had my fill of fairies, have resolved to forget about them. Third of September. I took a walk in the woods, passing under a beech tree, when a shower of nuts rained down upon my head. As I looked upwards, I heard a giggle. I imagined a fairy living high in the tree. Many trees are significant to fairies, in particular oak, ash, and thorn. Shakes the nuts down from the tree. Towards the end of my walk, I came upon a mysterious-looking circle of long, dark grass dotted here and there with mushrooms. I believe it to be a fairy ring. What an exciting find. As soon as I arrived home, I endeavored to find out all I could about fairy rings. It's so fascinating that I have typed my notes up into a small volume. I came across another interesting factor in my readings. Apparently fairies deplore being investigated by humans. They hate any kind of prying. So I've been going about my fairy hunt in entirely the wrong way. I find it funny that she resolved to forget about fairies, and that only really lasted two days. Aha, uh -huh, here's the secret of the fairy ring. There's so much to see in this book. In some parts of Western folk tales have described nighttime fairies ride on horses and circles around fairy rings. Rings appear to have links to fairyland. A person who steps will suddenly be able to see the fairies dancing and hear their sweet music. So entrancing those experiences that lose all sense of stay dancing with the fairies until they are pulled away. In some parts of the country, stepping into a fairy ring will bring good luck, and others it will bring misfortune. It's a place where fairies meet to dance. All fairies adore dancing. 
as amazing as sheep dogs. Also sounds fun. I love me some dogs, especially sheep dogs. Spotted Violet from the shop running the cake stall, she insisted on on plying me with a vast array of home baked offerings. Wandering the various stalls, bought Edith a rather lovely basket. feel to the evening. One could almost see the groups of fairies flitting about the shadowy fields as I meandered along my mindful of the day's events I remembered reading that fairies enjoy their own kinds of gatherings. I looked it up in my books. A fairy fair. Hundreds of fairies gather at night time for one of their favorite events, the fairy fair. This meeting of fairies is primarily a market for the trading of fairies' goods, mostly crafts and wares. However, the fairies take full advantage of the situation and enjoy socializing, singing, dancing, and generally making merry. There are many eyewitness accounts of fairies congregating at such fairs. The most famous fairy market is said to be held at Blackdown in Somerset. There are various accounts of this event described in West County Tale, Country Tales. The fairies also barter fruit, crockery, trinkets, and musical instruments, flutes, and tambourines are particular favorites. Some fairies are expert shoemakers and bring along pairs of tiny fairy shoes to sell. Fairy cakes, eelkong cups brimming with morning dew, bowls of nectar. Fairy cheese. Made a little sketch to go with my readings. How I wish I could catch a glimpse of a fairy fair.